Multiplayer games are undeniably popular in today's age. The top 5 games being watched on Twitch and top 5 games concurrently played on Steam are always going to be multiplayer games. That's why Genshin players like myself have always wondered why the game seemingly has zero interest in improving its multiplayer experience. Seeing as how Wintrace has just returned after a 244 day long hiatus, it got me thinking about this a lot, and now I think I can understand why MiHoYo is very reluctant to approach what from the outside looks to be a complete goldmine. I feel like it's definitely a bit trickier of a situation than most would expect. Obviously, developing multiplayer for any game entails lots of work, but it's typically worth it because of how effective it is at making engaging experiences that players want to keep coming back to. To contextualize things, let's quickly recap why people like multiplayer games so much, or rather, why they have a successful business model. Let's start with the social aspect. You can play with or against friends in a friendly or competitive manner, whatever you like the most. And if you say you don't have friends, well, multiplayer provides one way to make some. Then there's the inherent replayability factor, since even under the same conditions, different people playing makes for widely varied experiences. In competitive versus games especially, this emphasizes individual player skill, meaning there is more drive to improve. All this also makes it more appealing to watch others play, which helps the game get noticed and played by even more people. To sum it up, multiplayer games can naturally sustain their growing audiences very easily, making them very profitable even with simple monetization practices. It's no secret that the current implementation of Genshin's only permanent multiplayer, co-op mode, doesn't take full advantage of multiplayer's appeal because of this mode's many limitations. After unlocking it at Adventure Rank 16, which reportedly takes around 8 hours of gameplay, you can join the worlds of other players if their world level is lower than or equal to your own. Important quests get locked during co-op, so basically all you can really do with others is farm, explore around in one person's world, or play the few mini-games that exist within the Serena Teapot. And barring that last one, none of these experiences are really enhanced by the presence of others. Farming world materials only gives stuff to one person, farming enemy materials isn't hard but just tedious, and doing domains in co-op takes longer, so they're only worth it for the small subset of players who really like to carry or need to be carried. These restrictions make it so that just because you know someone else also likes Genshin, doesn't necessarily mean that playing with them will be fun or rewarding for both sides. Wintrace is the only true multiplayer Genshin's ever had, since it requires others to be played at all. For other events that had co-op available, it was always optional. Although many players have expressed desires for Wintrace to stay forever rather than be a limited time event, this is not the mode that would make Genshin have good multiplayer. It straight up would not stand the test of time. Not just because there are only so many maps to play on and hiding spots to use before it gets stale, but because in general, people lose interest quickly. There are very few examples of games that can keep its player base happy without regular updates, whether it be in the form of new ways to play, system mechanics, or constantly refreshed rewards. Now the current rerun of the mode has 7 new maps, which does help make it fresh this time around, but let's be real, these maps are all places that already exist in the game, so nobody had to design them from scratch. On top of that, there are no new abilities to experiment with for both hiders nor seekers. In the 8 months that this game mode was gone, they didn't really do anything to innovate on it. To me, that's an indication that there just isn't a whole lot that can be done to spice things up. That, or they just think that the mode is nearly perfect as is, so they didn't bother with making changes. Either way, I don't think it's a good sign. I mean, the Theater Mechanicus rerun was pretty different from its original incarnation, and though it had mixed reception, it gave returning players more of a reason to play it outside of the Primo Gems. Realistically speaking, Wintrace would not make for a good permanent game mode. After a little while, it would be completely forgotten about, just like how nobody cares about fishing anymore. I would really only accept it if it becomes a part of the teapot and can be played with your own custom maps, but honestly, I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. Obviously, Wintrace is not standard when it comes to its multiplayer implementation, because it's a minigame that uses Genshin's assets in a completely different way from the base game. But what if Genshin had a PvP mode that centered around the game's core mechanics? This would be the most ideal form of PvP from a developer's perspective because it would make use of each player's individual progression, thus encouraging them to grind for stats as well as their mechanical skills, overall giving more motivation to continue playing. 
given new characters at the normal pace, occasional system updates, and rewards tied to performance like leaderboards, it would probably be enough to keep players consistently interested, especially because the game's deeper combat systems would be able to be explored thoroughly, as opposed to other games made within the engine that are limited to simple strategies. This all sounds great, until you realize there's the obvious detriment in that it would incentivize player spending in order to get to the top. Genshin is undeniably pay to win, as constellations and weapon refinements have a direct correlation to DPS output, but it doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't negatively affect players who can't or aren't willing to spend. Losing to someone not because of a gap in skill, but because they paid more? Never a good look for any game. Considering that many players are upset with the Spiral Abyss's power creep clearly catering towards whale spenders, even though the rewards of Floor 12 only amount to less than a single pull, there's just too much risk involved when most players will stay content with the stream of new characters and events that we are already getting. Okay, well if PvP is out of the running, what about better co-op? Since the game is already primarily geared towards the single player experience in every Archon quest, story quest, hangout, and most events, it feels like there isn't much that can be done to make the existing co-op mode more appealing. So the next best thing would be a separate co-op focused game mode, and I can't think of one better than raids. Though obviously the experience differs from game to game, basically raids are a type of in-game content that requires larger groups of players when compared to typical gameplay. They usually entail going through a large dungeon, which features many uniquely challenging mechanics. Finally, they culminate in an intense, high-stakes boss fight. There is one main reason why I feel raids would make for a great addition to Genshin, and that is replayability. Raids are often the most challenging content in their respective games. Now in Genshin, difficulty mostly comes from timed DPS checks, which many would agree is not that engaging. With raids though, there's a lot of potential because the difficulty can instead stem more from requiring good strategy and coordination with other players. There would be a clear path for growth in continually understanding how to better clear the dungeon, and that wouldn't be tied down by time gates or RNG. And because the results would be based on skill rather than spending, it means the rewards can be the best in the game. In most implementations, raids give high level gear, but Genshin's enemy drops obviously aren't quite like that. Instead, it would probably be another upgrade material, like maybe ascending characters up to level 100 or something. Unlike the Spiral Abyss's measly primo gems, I'm confident that raids would have good enough rewards to give players a good enough reason to keep coming back. Alright, so raids sounds perfect for Genshin, right? Well, not exactly. You might remember some previous events from the past like the resurgent cryo regisvine from 1.2's The Chalk Prince and the Dragon event, and Rodea's Rage from 1.4's Wishful Drops event. Having had unique combat mechanics when compared to the regular overworld boss counterparts, these events were among some of the only few in the game to feature optional co-op matchmaking, presumably encouraging people to help each other out because of the relatively higher difficulty. Still though, they were based on existing bosses, and their mechanics never required precise strategy or execution across multiple players, so I wouldn't exactly call them indicative of what fighting a raid boss should feel like. But why haven't we gotten something like that yet? A limited time event seems like a perfect way to test out the implementation of a dungeon that leads up to a boss battle with co-op being a core mechanic throughout. Well to me, there's one pretty good reason. Not everyone wants to feel like they are forced to work together with other people for potentially many different reasons. The first is the chance of running into uncooperative or straight up toxic people. What if a person trolls you and makes it impossible to win? What if someone gets overly angry at you even though you were just trying your best? I mean, this stuff happens in domain runs and those aren't even hard. Imagine how those people would react when the process is longer and there are better rewards on the line. And it's not as easy as just reporting them, because not everyone is going to be reported fairly. It's not like people who are reported can be banned on the spot. Even for more concrete things like a person leaving a game in progress, you can't be too harsh with penalties because accidents happen. Since you wouldn't have the luxury of clearing such content solo at your own leisure, and you won't always have friends available to play with, especially ones at the same level as you, people are going to need to use the random matchmaking feature, and situations like these will inevitably come up. The second reason is poor connectivity between players. As any fighting game player in quarantine will tell you, good netcode, the term for the systems that enable online play, is essential for a solid online multiplayer experience. Genshin's multiplayer netcode is really not that great, 
but it's not that big of a deal in a PvE focused game as long as all players are dealing the right damage to the enemies they are trying to hit. But against raid bosses where there's a reliance on team coordination, such as different people doing separate tasks simultaneously, well that's where bad connections can really harm the experience. Even with great netcode though, of course having a stable connection does ultimately rely on the end user setup. And when some people play Genshin on Wi-Fi with high ping on their phones or laptops, that latency could definitely stop certain players from being able to enjoy raids. Speaking of phones, for PC and console players like myself, it's sometimes easy to forget that a lot of people play this game primarily on them. And no, I'm not even talking about processing power or size of the game's files. Mobile games are typically meant to function in a pick up and play fashion, where you can always pause and at no point are you really obligated to continue playing. Obviously, this helps the game's accessibility by making it so that it can be quickly played whenever you have a free minute. Even in Wintrace, the games are only a maximum of 3 minutes long. On the other hand, bigger co-op would presumably be a much longer commitment of time in which you and the rest of your group have some responsibility to be there. I'd imagine not everyone would be interested in dedicating themselves to a single session like that. From a developer's perspective, let's not forget that it would take a lot of work to make a raid. From start to finish, raids are all about being grand in scale. MiHoYo usually does a great job at making big events feel important, so that would mean developing new enemies, environments, mechanics, bosses, music, cutscenes, and the like. And with all additions to Genshin, whether they're temporary events or permanent features, they aren't just added in and that's it, they are always introduced through the story in some fashion. So with a raid type mode, having the writing team figure out how to translate the gameplay into something that narratively makes sense, stays consistent with the rest of the game's lore, and still feels relevant is no simple task. Difficulty also plays a big role in long term success. If it's too easy, then it won't feel engaging, but if it's too hard, then it might frustrate players to the point of making them quit. And if you go the route of making multiple selectable difficulties, well, that's another feature that needs to be carefully thought out. Looking at it from a practical perspective, if Genshin's flavor of the month temporary events and new character releases already can keep the game's player count relatively stable, it's kind of hard to justify working on a large scale feature like raids when there's a chance it might not be received that well. We already know that MiHoYo is constantly putting resources towards large future content updates in the form of Teyvat's other regions, so while I think raids would be good for the game, I can't say I expect something like it to be added anytime soon. After researching all this, I do have to applaud Wintrace for doing a decent job of getting around these problems. Even though the hiders are technically on a team, you don't really have to rely on teammates to win, meaning that having bad teammates is not as much of a detriment as it usually is. Players leaving is also mostly inconsequential because of how short games are and how easy it is to start another one. Also, the way the mode reuses assets from the base game to reduce effort and file load is pretty smart, even though some people may phrase it as just lazy. I don't think I've said this yet, but Wintrace is pretty fun. It's well designed, and I still don't think it would make for a very good permanent game mode, but I am glad that it exists as it is. So I know what I talked about in this video was kind of all over the place, but I hope I was able to drive home the single point that there are a lot of different factors that go into your favorite multiplayer game giving you a good multiplayer experience. If Genshin does have something in the works for a future update, then to match the scale and quality that we the audience would expect, they're gonna need a lot of time for development. And if there aren't plans for better multiplayer, I think that's okay. I personally have been pretty satisfied with the content we've been regularly receiving, so as much as I would like to enjoy Genshin more with my friends, I don't want all that effort to be wasted on something unless it truly revolutionizes the current game. But at the end of the day, I'm just a guy speculating stuff so who really knows what's going to come in the near future. I just thought this was a pretty interesting topic of discussion and wanted to share my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching.